I just got a really interesting violin. Now, the violin itself is probably, you know, it's a well-made instrument, but the interesting thing is the varnish problem. That instrument has extremely sticky varnish, just the varnish like never really dried. And so um, it's it's not doesn't look that old. Like it looks like it's maybe 15, 20 years old, the violin. Uh, but a lot of the varnish is so soft, it's worn off down here, worn off underneath. And then a lot of the dust and dirt has actually stuck to it. So I'm going to show you what I do to make this instrument look good, make the varnish a bit more solid, and get the player playing again. Because right now, the player really can't play this violin. It is not very functional at all. Okay, now it's taken a while for me to actually get to this repair, but I finally got there. So today um, I'm going to clean this violin. So the varnish is really sticky, so I'm really worried about some of the dirt having actually connected like, like, like combined with the varnish so that's going to be very tricky i might have to very lightly sand it and i've also got to be careful because i think if i use water it could actually just wash the varnish off so it's a bit of a scary one i'm going to try just in a very small area i'll try firstly with water very carefully and see if the varnish can handle it uh, otherwise, I'll um, I might have to use like oil and um, oil and very fine sandpaper. I'm not quite sure. It's going to be a really tricky one. Look at all that like dust that has uh, stuck to the varnish. That is incredible. But first of all, I'm just going to plane the fingerboard because uh, that's one of the jobs I have to do for the violin. And uh, it because of all the ebony dust, the instrument will get really dirty. Um, or dusty so it makes sense to just do plain the fingerboard uh, before I clean the violin so taking the nut off okay so now I've glued the nut back on I have planed the fingerboard and I actually have to wait for the glue to dry before I can do any more cleaning because if I accidentally bump the nut, it'll just fall off or slide sideways. And at that point, there's gonna be some problems for the player. So I'm just gonna hang this up and uh, they can wait. Good morning. So it's been a few days. It's been really busy uh, because it's a pre-Christmas period, but uh, the client is going to come and pick up this instrument pretty soon, so I better get back into it. So I'm just going to try on a small area just to see what happens. I'll try just under here. Oh, it's just got so much dust attached to it and dirt. So I'm using water, seems to be working okay. So I'll just get the roughest dirt off and then I'm going to use an oil and uh, I might even try my special cleaner. This is really scary. So the varnish, it's been quite humid so the varnish is actually sticky and uh, so I'll be really careful that the water doesn't uh, doesn't just wear it off. Yeah, it's here around the neck. It's wearing off. It's 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 everywhere that's been touched a lot. Um, there's some dirt mixed in with the varnish, and and it's literally the dirt and varnish want to come off. You can see. Look at this. You can actually see. It's almost like. I don't know, like someone put their thumb just in the one spot. Yeah, and the places where the dirt and varnish are mixed together, it is just, the varnish is literally just coming off. And there's nothing I can do about that. It's it's just, it's this combination, this dirt varnish combination, you know, it's it's got to come off. You can't just leave it on there with the dirt and the varnish. Alrighty, I'm going to let this dry now. It's too scary the whole thing. 
Don't want to wear any more varnish off. I'm just patting it dry just to... Alright, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to go for a walk and then after I come back from the walk I'll have another go. I played around a little bit and I discovered that um, one of the safest ways of doing this is fine sandpaper, really, really fine sandpaper. The, the problem is there's so much like little fluff on the top plate. It's just dust embedded on the uh, on the varnish. I'm just going to use a bit of oil and fine sandpaper. Now, luckily, this is not an antique violin. It's a new violin. Uh, I believe it's a uh, like a fairly well-made Chinese instrument, but like the varnish is just so sticky. It's also possible that uh, that the people got the instrument uh, in the white and then put varnish on afterwards. But it's a really sticky varnish. So here we go. Oh, this one, this this area here is quite difficult. There's also a totally worn patch just here. A good part of the top plate, uh, I've managed to kind of work back and clean as well as I can. Uh, I'll do a little bit more and uh, yes, I've got to do the sides. The back isn't quite so bad, like it doesn't have so much stuck to it, but uh, you can see how the varnish is just worn off and so many places. This is a very interesting <laughs> project. <laughs> Definitely uh, not one of my easier ones. And it's a very different challenge. Like I don't get this kind of challenge with really old instruments. It's very rare that you get a sticky old instrument. Uh, they knew their varnish back then. There was unfortunately in the sort of 60s, I think for 60s, 70s, it kind of started that people experimented with these kind of balsam varnishes. It, I think it mostly came out of England. And I've, I've literally, you know, there are so many makers that made sticky instruments. And uh, and it's, it's hard to, you know, it's kind of hard to fix because when you have a sticky or a softer varnish underneath and try and put a harder varnish on top, that'll kind of crack after a while. So, so I'll, I'll be doing that. I'll put a slightly harder varnish on top just one that doesn't stick but it'll probably get like little cracking and things like that so the player is going to have to get their instrument polished pretty much you know once a year for the next 10 years or so to really fix up the varnish and, and get that stickiness out of it but uh, you know they're willing to do it they like this instrument so um, I just want to get the instrument working well for them. Whew, that literally took an hour and uh, I am, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of the dirt back and things like that and uh, the instrument is now ready for some varnish but uh, I, I'm going to use a tiny bit of colour just here just so it doesn't look so extreme. I mean it's, it's kind of, it's a obviously a worn look but uh, I just want it to work a little better so I'm going to add a bit of colour. I've mixed up some colour here. Just going to check on a tiny bit how it looks. Yeah that just gives it a little bit of extra colour. So I'm going to let that dry and then I will add some clear varnish over the top. Okay, so I've prepared my bridge, uh, still waiting for this varnish to dry, but I actually realized there were all these loose and open joints, so I kind of stuck the knife in and I glued them all. Look, the whole instrument is basically, so the top plate was off here, 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 and here. I literally, I probably could have just taken it off like that, but I didn't want to do that, so I've glued it on. I've got to let the client know it's going to cost a little bit more to repair. But I'm going to let this dry till this afternoon and then I will get back to the varnish. Ah, it's been a little while, I've had lunch um, and this uh, this violin's dried for a while. It's actually dried for quite a few hours now, I think it's been uh, five hours or something like that. So, And with this dry weather we've got like 21% humidity and it's quite warm, like it got up to close to 30 degrees outside. So. I can take these clamps off now and then I will varnish the area. Okay, so now I'm literally just going to do a coat of varnish. 
just very thin cover varnish. So I'm going to do more than one coat, like I'll probably end up doing about three coats. One coat done. Now I've got to just hang it up and wait a little bit. And uh, then I'll get on to the next coat. All right, it's been a little while, so I'm going to do the second coat. There'll be a few coats still. Luckily the varnish is very thin, the sticky layer. So uh, I'll be able to make it look really nice with the cover varnish, so that should be really good. I've, uh, I've let this dry for a good part of the afternoon. It's evening now. It's getting close to Christmas, so I'm actually working into the night, which, uh, oh, you know, some days is okay. Not all the time. Okay. So it's time to just sand this area. Now I've got a much more sturdy varnish, so I can actually sand it with water and it won't destroy the um, original varnish because there's a couple of layers of varnish on top now. Now I've got to be really careful around these edges. It's got quite sharp, sharp edges like the Messiah Stradivarius or a lot of French instruments. And so as I'm um, sanding, I just cannot touch these sharp edges. Otherwise the varnish will wear straight off. Okay, back to sanding. So after this, I'm just gonna let the water dry and then I'm gonna give um, everything a bit of a polish. And that should already start looking a whole lot better. Okay, I'm very close. I've, I've sanded everything now. I'm just letting it dry. And then I'll get the polishing cloth in. All right, I've got my trusty polishing cloth. And I've put some metho, some varnish. And the time has come to give the violin a polish. That's crazy. It's actually starting to look really good. And it's not actually, um, it's not sticky anymore. Like I've only just polished it, but I can run my uh, hand along it. So the player is going to be really pleased. Okay, so I've given this a really good polish now and uh, I'm going to put it aside to dry again and then I will sand very lightly again. I can feel like I'm getting really close to finishing this instrument, which is really exciting. Late. It's pretty late in the evening and uh, it's the day before I go on holidays and I've got to get this finished, so I'm just going to give it another quick sand and then another polish. That's beginning to look a lot better and the, the you know, the varnish is a lot more solid. Um, I can touch it, it's no longer tacky or sticky. So that's really good. Uh, tomorrow the client's gonna come and pick up the violin, so I'm gonna try and get the strings on it tonight. Okay, the exciting moment has come to put some of the fittings back in. I'm gonna have to fit these a little bit uh, with the varnish I had to put on. Some of it soaked into the holes, so I just have to make sure the pegs fit again. Bit of peg paste. Just doing the final touches on the bridge. Okay, better put up the sound post first. Don't want to put too much pressure on the top plate before the sound post is up. 27 kilos, that is a lot. So that's um, ready to just put up, hang up for the evening, and then I'll do the rest tomorrow. There we go, we can have a rest overnight. And then tomorrow I'll do the final touches and it'll be picked up. It's the next morning. The violin is literally going to get picked up in about an hour. And I'm just going to do the final touches. So, hmm. Last night I put the strings on so they would settle in. The violin is just looking beautiful. There's nothing sticky about it anymore. So it's going to be nicely playable for the player. You won't stick to it. Let's put the uh, chin rest on and then I'm going to go to the shop area to try it out. 
Got the two important things over to my shop, the violin to work on and my coffee. I definitely need my bulletproof coffee this morning because I was literally up uh, the last three nights. I had to work really late to get, uh, yeah, to get everything finished. I'm going on a little bit of a break, so there was a lot of, uh, a lot of work to get finished beforehand. <laughs> So I'm super happy with that. Uh, I think the play, I'll be really happy as well, like being able to use the instrument, not having all that, that furry dust stuck to it. They'll be able to play again. Um, so it's possible, it's very hard. When there's a sticky varnish, it's quite difficult to repair because the, the you imagine like a sticky varnish, like something, it, it's something soft. And when you put something harder on top, um, it, um, you know, soft underneath, a bit of a harder varnish on top. That can really create some problems, like with cracking, you know, as the varnish underneath, the soft varnish underneath shifts, the harder what varnish can crack. So I had to really find a balance between the kind of varnish I use on the top here, uh, that, that it's soft enough to move with a soft varnish, but hard enough to, you know, so that the, the player can actually touch it. I'm quite often, um, I do get quite a few, especially English instruments from the 1970s, 1980s and uh, 1990s. Uh, 1990s probably in Australia as well. There's a few American makers as well. Uh, but it was a tradition, this, this kind of balsamy type varnish. And it looks beautiful, it's soft, it's easy to work but it does make the instrument super sticky. So, uh, you know, I've, I've had this problem in the past. Uh, this is not one of those English uh, or, or um, other instruments. And, and it wasn't all makers, it was just a few makers, but there was just this trend that went through the violin making community. Um, a lot of, uh, I also know that some of the amateur makers here in Brisbane were using this balsam varnish and I still, you know, I still end up with like furry violins basically with with most of the lining from the case just stuck to the instrument um, but you know that can be sorted out it's it's quite an expensive um, quite an expensive thing to do because I'm, I'm, I'm basically you know all the cleaning and then re-varnishing this guy uh, the, the the guy I did this violin for is very lucky I actually probably quoted way too little um, and so he's getting a really nice, um, you know, he's getting his violin working really nicely. And uh, but also, I also really enjoyed doing it. You know, it's uh, I I really like getting an instrument working well again. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and uh, also subscribe and hit the little bell so you find out every time I post a new video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Keep making beautiful music. Bye.